is an expert stock market analyst, so perhaps you've seen her commentary. And Melissa, good morning to you. Thank you for being here with us. Can good morning. you hear me? Okay. Can you hear me? Hi, yes. Okay, good morning. <laughs> All right, so Melissa, you are good to go. We're um, just a couple minutes early, so you can go ahead and get started if you want, and um, you have 55 minutes. Wonderful, I'm going to share the slide. Let me know if you can see it. Yes, looks good. Okay, welcome. Thanks so much for coming, everyone, and thank you for having me. Well, 365 is an exciting day to be here, and it really is an exciting time to trade. So the market is down this morning. I took a look at that before I popped in here. So we're going to talk about shorting today, and we're specifically going to talk about focusing on one thing. I do have the chat up, so if you have questions as we go along, feel free to just write it in the room. I have no problem answering the questions live as we're here, so I will take a look at the chat. And if you have any questions afterwards, you can always email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com. You can watch me on TV. I was on Charles Schwab's network yesterday. I appear on Fox regularly, and I often talk about the economy and the market, although the economy doesn't always go hand in hand with the U.S. stock market. Again, here is my email, melissa at thestockswoosh.com. You can also call me on the phone at 929-3200-GAP if you have questions. And you can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. I do try to put a lot of videos on Skype. My TV hits also reviews of different trades that we've done. And I live along Central Park. So I actually took some really cute snow videos uh, on this week of the snow that we finally got in New York City. Uh, so I have a lot of New York videos as well. So we're going to talk about 2023 recap 2024. So it's a good time at the beginning of the year. You can call it New Year's resolutions. You can call it having goals, setting goals for yourself. How was your trading in 2023? If you traded the year, did you end the year up? Did you end the year down? Did you have a great year? Did you not have a good year? Did you have a bad year? Again, recap what you did in 2023. Take a look at the good things you did. Give yourself a pat on the back and take a look at things that you could improve on the year. Rhonda said she was up, that's good, that's good. So if you did have a good year and you were up for the year, guess what, you wanna have a better year in 2024, okay? It's always good to think about the future and again, we wanna continue to make more money in the market. So make up your mind no matter where you were for 2023 to have a better year in 2024. And so I think at the end of the year where the market rallied, it was November, it was December, a lot of people were just buying every dip and it carried through into the end of 2023. This year, however, is an election year. So it could be rocky, it could be volatile. I don't think this year is going to be an easy year for swing trading. Why do I say that? Because the, the market this year, in my opinion, is not going to power trend up and it's not going to power trend down. And typically when you're doing swing trades, you really need the momentum of the market power trending continually in your direction. You're already seeing that actually to start this year, 2024, how the market has not been having the follow through to the upside. And again, it's earnings season right now. We're gonna have selective things that we're gonna look at today that we traded so far this year. But for me, actually I said this yesterday on Charles Schwab's network, for me, my focus this year is really doing selective stock picks. And so that's gonna help you have a better year in 2024, particularly, like I said, if we don't have a power trend year. So I put in here our stats for the day trades for 2023 so you could see what we did for last year. Most of these trades are shorts. I do focus on shorts. So this was day trades in the live room. I run a live trading room every day. We, we did good last year, okay? Again, many of these trades were shorts. A few of them were, for, were longs. These were trades on margin. So you would have needed a margin account to do these trades. You can go to a retail broker like Schwab to set up a margin account, or you could go to a prop broker to set up a margin account. Depends what you want to do. But 569,970 was our results for last year. And again, I focus on shorting, which we're gonna talk about. I also do options. The options that I do are in a newsletter format, not in a live room. I'm risking more in my options trades because I'm holding options overnight. 
So these were all the trades that we did last year. These trades go directly to your email if you want to do them in live time where I call the strike. And again, whether we're doing a put or a call, we had a mix last year of calls and puts. And again, we hit over 2 million for the year for 2023. Now I did put the stats for this year so far this year for the live room. We're at 35,207, and for the live room so far this year, we've had a fantastic start to the year. The trades have been there. We've been doing them. JPM actually was along, which we're going to go over the trades from last week. But long story short, we've had a great start to 2024. Why? The trades have been there. The volatility has been there. Again, you're, if you're looking for a smooth ride up this year or even a smooth ride down in anything, you're not going to see that in every single thing of the market this year. And then these are the options results so far, year to date, 2024. And I took some time off, so I didn't really get back until the, the 4th of uh, January, 3rd or 4th of January. 250,445 for the year in options. We've had some really big trades. We are gonna go over them here today. The biggest trades we've had this year has been Boeing. Boeing's down again today, along with the market. And again, we're gonna talk about these things. Again, Boeing was a short. So results so far for this year, we're on pace, we're on track, again, to have a better year this year than last. And again, some of you said you had a great year last year. That's good. Stay on track. If you're someone that is looking to be active in the market, it's really about chunking it out. I'm an active trader. I get in, get out, get in, get out. Whether I'm doing day trades, whether I'm doing options, I'm looking to trade momentum. So it's about having a focus. So what do I focus on? I focus on spotting institutional money in gaps. So this is a chart of BA. Actually, I don't have uh, the, last, the last day in this here from yesterday from the 16th. But going back, looking at this chart, I'm going to show you what a gap is and what occurred here so far in BA this year. So if you take a look and let's we'll just look at just look at these these here. The stock closes here at 4 o'clock Eastern time and gap down here at 9.30. So what is a gap? A gap is a difference between the close and the open. So this is a daily chart. This is a daily chart of BA. So again, it closed at one price and opened the next morning at a different price. I said that earlier, at least I didn't look at it right now, but at least this morning, a half an hour ago, BA was gapping down again today. So we shorted this, okay? And again, we are trading momentum. So this is, you would do a put in this, which is what we did. If you did an options trade or you would short it on margin. But what happened with BA and going back, this was the first beginning part of first week of 2024, institutional money sold off the stock. Again, why this thing, that thing, mechanical failures, news. I didn't know any of those things were going to happen when I called the puts that we did in this stock. So I'm really not concerned necessarily about the reason for the gap because you can get really caught up in that. And again, as I said earlier, sometimes the, the economic news or different reports that come out don't match up to what the stock is doing. The price of the stock and what's really happening in it, are institutions buying it or institutions selling it, is really all that matters for you to make money in it for you to be successful and pull the profit out of the trade. But getting back to what I was saying, for this year, do you have a plan of action to have a great year this year? It's the American dream to become rich, successful, and financially independent, and everyone wants to do it, but not everybody has a plan to make that happen. And one of the reasons why, particularly I started to trade the market, and lots of people that I talk to now that I teach, people want to earn a lot of money trading, but they have no idea how to do it, and they don't have a plan of action to, to actually put it in place. And lots of times people then get caught up while the dream is alive, they get caught up in taking, you know, trades without really thinking them through. They find themselves losing money in trades and then they lose sight of the dream. But you can't lose sight of the dream because you really can do well in the market, but you have to have a plan of action like you would for anything else that you would do. So for me, my plan of action is looking at the gap. It's particularly shorting. And I say this to people, because again, people start out, they have big dreams and the dreams don't happen like they want or as quickly as they want to as far as the money, and then they lose sight of it. You don't want to settle for mediocrity. Even if you had a year last year where you made money, could you have made more? You know, again, we're going to talk about some of the trades that I've called in the last two weeks here today. 
and some I still have on. But the fact is, you need big trades. You want big trades. Again, when I say big, I mean you want a big move in the stock or even in the market, okay? This is a chart of Tesla. And again, we shorted this too. We did puts in this too. This had a gap, stock or several gaps actually. Stock closed here at four o'clock, gap down, open, rallied, dropped. And this was in the last week as well. And again, Tesla had news that came out on it. You can follow that. Tesla has earnings, not for a couple of weeks, but, but a lot of times people are just happy if they make five cents, 10 cents. We're not scalping. I'm trading momentum. I want a big move, a dollar, more. Again, big moves like I'm talking about in these charts. But anyways, getting back to the philosophy of what I was trying to, to tell you is that stay focused on the dream. If it is your dream to really be successful and independent, you can do it. But you've got to have that mentality that you are a risk taker, okay? People who take risks can make millions of dollars. You see it all the time in real estate, actually. We're probably going to have a downside or a correction, if you want to call it that, in real estate it's probably not going to be 2024, could be 2025, could be two years out. There will be opportunities to purchase real estate and make money as well when that correction occurs. But every day in the market, there's opportunities to trade and make money. And trading is a vehicle for even the average person without a lot of money to, in fact, get rich. It may not happen overnight. Again, you have to have a plan of action. You have to start with what you have. You may have to risk a small amount of money and then grow it, okay? But it won't happen if you don't take risk and it won't happen if you don't have a successful strategy that you're utilizing every day in the market because there's no guarantees. There's no guarantees or trading on the market. And that's why risk takers thrive in a trading environment. The winners win big and the losers lose big. And it will always be that way from now until the end of time, okay? So how can you attain the American dream if this is in fact your focus? You gotta stay on top of that dream. You can't give up on it. And then you've also got to get realistic or clear with your own expectations of yourself in the market. Start with the amount of money you have and be satisfied risking what you can afford right now. If it's $100, fine. If it's $200, fine. You will build it. Keep your eye on the goal and be patient with yourself to grow your capital over time. Learn a good strategy and you can learn it from me and then apply it every single day. And again, that's what we're going to talk about today. And it's really about defining the pick. So every day I'm looking for the best pick. Okay, that's how I'm getting these results. You don't want to gamble your money away in poor trades. And honestly, if you don't have a strategy at all, you should take a step back and take a break. Because again, I, I talked about buying dips because that worked at the end, at the end of 2023, but it is not going to work the entire year of 2024. And you've got to focus on quality trades. You've got to get committed to that dream. If, if really your dream is to work for yourself and trade the stock market, you must be committed to it. Come hell or high water, you're going to do it. And you've got to take the necessary steps to make that happen. Invest your money, invest your time, and be careful and be patient. So I'm here to help you, and we're going to talk today about doing it. Um, I did not do BA to the upside when it had the rally for quite a lot of reasons. If we have time at the end lawn, I will discuss that. However, I focus on shorts, number one, which I started out talking about earlier today. That my, Every day I get up and I look for the best short. So BA was not a short until recently. That's number one. Number two, lawn, BA is actually in a downtrend. So I had absolutely no idea whatsoever in going long BA even last year. And the only reason that BA rallied was because the market rallied last year. Stocks that I would go long or that I have gone long, which I don't have in here today. I do go long, but it's rare. J Actually, JPM. We're going to talk about that. That's in here today. We went long JPM last Friday at head earnings. So I focus very, I'm very picky on shorts, but I'm even more picky on longs because I only want to do along if it's extra, extra special. Another chart that I love to the upside, which I did talk about in Schwab yesterday, is crowd. You can Google that too. We went long that. So I'm doing the creme to the creme if I happen to be going long or doing calls. There was no setup to go long, in my opinion, in BA that made any sense last year, unless you took it with the market. Okay? Uh, getting back to what I was saying here, you need a focus. 
Okay, you need a you need a focus, and that's what we're going to talk about. You need a foundation. You need an infrastructure for every entry, and it's a strategy. And for me, it's gaps. The strategy is the core reason why I'm taking the trade or even contemplating it in the first place. An entry in a stock should not be taken unless the trade has a foundation supporting it, and the foundation for me is gaps. So again, we, there's many gaps in this BA chart. We'll talk about this one here too, which was the first BA trade that I called, which was you know, a, a really nice trade that we called the first week of January and it took it through. There was a gap down here. This was overnight. This was on a Monday. This was a Friday the 5th. This was the Monday where the stock had a big, really big move overnight. But again, there was a gap here. So this is the reason that I had called that trade. So again, what is a gap? A stock gap from the opening price today is different than the closing price of yesterday's trading. A gap is a break in price action from one day to the next. Okay, simple. But can you trade every gap? No, why? Not every gap is made with institutional money. But if you can spot the institutional money or what I call the power of money, then you can play it. Power of money is in charge. Power of money is in charge of the stock's direction. Trends are set and moved by the power of money people, of which there's a lot of in the market. Someone's saying something about stairs up and stairs down. I caution you as well, if you're trading the same stock up and the same stock down, guess what? You have zero conviction in the direction of that stock as far as who's in control of the stock. When I say power money, when I say institutional money, when I say who's in control, I mean who's in control of what's happening in the price action of it. You're gonna get all messed up in your head if you're doing the same stock or the market in different directions in a, in a short period of time. Um, again, it's one of these things where you either have 100% conviction that the stock is getting sold off by institutional money or you have 100% conviction that they're buying it. It can't be both. That's not a good idea to do that, okay? And again, 100% conviction is how you should look at the trade. Why? Because it's going to allow you to hold a trade through. And again, I'm going to go back to this BA, even though we're going to talk about this trade. This trade was actually down before it hit big in the BA, okay? But we are going to talk about that in a minute. So anyways, gaps is where it's at. Oh, here it is. So I called the 245 puts in BA on Wednesday the 3rd. So this was an insane trade to start out the year again this is before the news came out that there was mechanical issues over the weekend everybody made out big in this trade the cost was three dollars which is really reasonable for a stock at this price an advanced trader risk of nine thousand you could have made forty eight thousand dollars on this trade this is not even holding it to the last day of expiration which i didn't do but if you did you made even more but even just a normal exit on this just get in get out through that drop on the Monday into the Tuesday it was 533% return investment. Remember what I was telling you about the fact that you can take a small amount of money and grow it? If you did one contract, which some people did in this, it was an insane, insane amount of money. Again, one contract would have cost you $300 and you would have made close to $1,500 or so, depending on what you would have paid for it, where you would have got out of it in one contract with a $300 risk, okay? So this is why I love doing options. Right in here, symbol was BA, strike was 245. I called it up here. Here's where I called it. I sent the trade out on January 3rd at 10.43 in the morning. If you're on the newsletter, you got it. It expired the 12th. I didn't call it out for the 5th, but that trade would have worked for the 5th. And again, it was a put. So if you sign up for the newsletter, this is what you're going to get. And then you get it in live time and you take the trade. I also called, and you could still be in these. I'm not. This was another. You could still be in this trade. The stock, the stock was at 198 this morning. I got out of it. You've got to, you got to make a decision where you're getting out of some of these things. I'm in other, uh, other trades this morning that are up more now today after yesterday. But anyways, this was the 225 puts that I called on Thursday the 11th. That was last week. The 225s that expire Friday. You could still be in this trade. This is ridiculous. These are ridiculous trades. I mean, this is just like, I've been on fire this year. But again. This is the reason that people come, and this is the reason that people pay me. I've been doing this for 16 years. The cost was 330, number of contracts was 28, an advanced trader risk of 9240. You could have made over 60 grand. If you had one, doesn't matter. You could still be in this trade. You would have made more money than me. I got out of it at 25. I thought that was a good exit. This has been rocking and rolling. Again, when you take a trade, you're looking for the momentum to come in strong. We're looking for this to the downside. And again, somebody asked again about going up and going down and stairs and this and that. One of the reasons that I love to short is guess what? Short moves happen faster than moves to the upside. 
the panic buying, which can happen, and you're sort of seeing that actually in NVIDIA. NVIDIA is the one stock, I don't know if I have this in here or not, that you've sort of seen panic buying that people said, well, it can't go up anymore, and it can't go up anymore, and it can't go up anymore. It gapped up yesterday and flew up even yesterday. People are almost panic buying that. That is very, very rare. You rarely see that in stocks. You never see that in the market. But anyways, panic selling happens all the time. So what are we shorting? We've been shorting panic selling. And panic selling happens fast. Panic happens fast, whether it's panic selling or panic buying. But panic buying is rare. I like to make money fast. And in an options trade, I'm doing the weeklies or something out for a week and a half because we had the short week this week. This is fast to me. I also did the 215s. I called them on Friday. In the pre-market, you do the trade into the open. Again, these were so cheap. This was ridiculous. This was the best return on investment and biggest trade. You could still be in this trade. You would be up more money today. You could still be in this trade. I have other ones on. I called other strikes. So I'm I've been taking it down and taking it down. And I think, again, chunk it out. Take the trade, get the move, book the money, get out. You can take another trade. That's another thing that traders, and this is just my general experience teaching people now for as long as I've been teaching people and running the stock swoosh. Traders want to hold everything to a piggy target. You cannot do that. That's not your goal. Your goal is to find the best pick. Get the direction right. Size yourself correctly. Get the move, get out. You can take another trade. And that is exactly what we did with this. And, and, and we also did it with Tesla. And again, you could have done that with NVIDIA. You could have done that with NVIDIA too, but you would have done a call in NVIDIA, okay? But again, getting back to start with what you have and build it, you can't make money if you don't trade. You gotta know what to do, or you gotta be following someone that knows what to do. These were ridiculously priced. They, these were so ridiculous. You could have actually paid less than this on this on the Friday. $1.50 is what the 215 strike costs. And again, I've been doing this a long time to see that it would go to the strike by this point, okay, which it got through it, it was crazy. And you, you'd be, this is worth more today. It's going to be worth more in the open in 10 minutes. But I get out. 900% return on investment. So again, one thing, two things, okay. Trying to play gaps. I'm trading gaps, Mark. That is what this lecture is about today. You can make money trading gaps. I don't know why you think that's absurd. It's not absurd at all. In fact, if you're looking to scalp or just trade momentum, like I said, you're going to have a hard time. Buying dips is not going to work this year. Trading gaps is you get the move in the right direction that the gap is going, and that's how you make money, and that's what pays you. Again, going back to this move here, you bought the put, you see where the stock was. And again, I don't have yesterday's in here, but we gapped down yesterday and we were down today. This lecture here, Mark, until 10 o'clock or whenever I'm talking is about gaps. Any questions here about anything so far? Anyways, making money trading is fun. Everybody that did those trades made a lot of money no matter where they got out. I'm sure some people are still in those trades. One of the reasons that I like to trade options is because of the fact that you can hold overnight with a fixed risk. But you need to think about what you're doing and you need to use your brain. And so many people, they don't really think when they take trades. A lot of times people go to free chat room trials or Reddit chat rooms or even webinars like here and they just take blind ideas from people and they have no idea why the person is even taking the trade in the first place, okay? You have to understand the philosophy behind why you're taking the trade. That's the whole point, okay? And again, when I say taking options, you have a fixed risk. If you risk $1,000 in a trade, you can't lose more than $1,000 in an options trade. Whatever you pay for it, that's your risk. When you're doing a swing trade, okay, which people are going to get hurt in if the market doesn't go the way they want this year. You're kind of seeing that now, actually, with this today, even this morning. But... In a swing trade, you have unlimited risk. You say, well, I'm going to kill it when it gets to this point. Really? Well, what if it gets trapped overnight in a gap? Okay. Uh, William is asking, I'm buying the puts and selling them. I'm buying the calls and selling them. I'm trading momentum in the gap. My stop loss is my risk, Jeff is asking me. So if you're going to risk five grand, that's your stop loss. If you want to kill it before then, you can do that. I'm not doing that. And again, getting back to what I was saying, so many people trade the market, but they're almost like gambling. 
because they're doing trades and they don't know why they're doing it. They can say, well, I'm doing this. Really? I'm buying support. Well, how do you know that that support's going to work? Do you know how many, many areas of support are in Boeing or Crowd or the market or the SPY or anything or even JPM? A million, a trillion. You can't just buy support, even in a strong stock or a strong market, and expect to make money on a consistent basis. It only works if you have a power trend market. And I'm telling you, you're not going to have that today. Gaps are predictable. They are predictable, but you've got to put the odds in your favor. So I devise a rating system. It's a 26 point rating system to help me predict if that gap is going to move in the direction of the gap. I don't need a perfect score. I'm looking for 20 points or more. And again, I prefer to short, but they are predictable. If I get under 20 points, I don't do it. And again, you only need one trade a day, but you've got to find a way to put trades in your favor. Otherwise, you're going to have more losers and winners. And also, you want to have some big winners like this. So getting to what I was saying, I have a checklist. I created this for myself to use. I started trading in 2008. And again, I now teach people how to do this. And I've been teaching people now for a long time as well, for about 11 going on 12 years. But when I started trading, I got into gaps and shorts very quickly, but I didn't have this method. It took me about three years to create it. This is what you'd come and learn from me. If you want to take my class, this is what you'd come and you'd learn from me, okay? So I use one strategy, which I go through and I rate the gap every single day, and then I determine if it has 20 points or more, okay? You can find, you can find gaps anywhere. Someone's asking about that. You can find them. That's something that you can now ask the Well365 team. You can get a scanner, you can get their charts, and you can find gaps anywhere. I don't know what you're talking about, about your question there, Marco, who's wrong about what? I don't know what you're talking about there if you want to write it in. But anyways, getting back to what I was saying, momentum is the ticket, whether you do a day trade or whether you do an option. So again, stock close here, gap down. This was BA. You could have shorted as a day trade, got in, got out. You could have done it as a put, got in, got out. You could have done it as a put, out into the following week is what we did and then got the move okay but this was this was the 245s that i called here and again got the drop anyways what i also like to do we're going to talk we talked about options we're going to talk about day trades i run a live room in the room i call the exact entry the exact stop and the exact exit i have videos of the room if you'd like to see them online and go to my youtube with the stock swoosh if you want to trial for the room for thursday and friday you can email me at melissa at the uh, But many, many people that are running businesses like mine, trading educational businesses, do not call, that, at least the moderator, the head person, the person that teaches the person that trades, does not call the trade live in the room. I do. We're in and out quick. Five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. We were in and out quick yesterday. Again, I'm not running the room today. I have an assistant that's helping me out, but I will be running the room Thursday and Friday. I'm not calling areas. I'm not calling around about this. I'm calling the exact numbers, 50 by 60 or whatever the numbers are, where I'm calling get in here and get out here. But these are trades that you would do on margin. So this was last week's totals. I, I don't have this week's in here. I have the, the trades that we did in the stats at the beginning of the webinar. We did two trades in BA. I actually held BA here. This actually was a positive trade, but I let it stop against me. I was looking for a bigger number on the 8th. I did it again. In the afternoon, we're going to go over this trade. I made money. We did PA on the 9th, no trades on the 10th, no gaps rated per my system. The 11th, we did BA again. We did Tesla, and then we went long JPM. Yes, I will do the indices if you mean the Qs and the SPY. We haven't done the diamonds in a while. Um, and we're going to go over these trades. So anyways, getting back to the day trades, I'm day trading, okay, on a one minute so if you don't like options or you don't want to do options, you can do day trades. You got to have a margin account. I, I wouldn't, I'm not watching here, Joe, uh, BA right now. I'm talking to you. The market opens in three minutes. So to say to do BA or not today, I'll, I'll look at that after 10 o'clock. I've called no trades today because I'm here with you. <laughs> so um, I can't make a determination about that. I wasn't planning on trading this morning because I was going to start speaking at 9 a.m. So as far as whether or not you should do a new short here in BA, I, I'm not going to recommend that to you at this point because I didn't take the time to rate the gap this morning. I knew I wasn't going to be trading today. And so 
I, I'll look at that after 10, but I, I wouldn't go just hog wild into that right now. Uh, getting back to this. Okay, so you can see here what happened with this. We shorted it here, and some people got out in the drop. Again, these are well trots, one minute charts. So this is a one minute on the eight. So I didn't get out. And, and you can see why I didn't get out, though. I really, I thought it would move bigger. So I got stopped. Again, in day trades, I do put a stop. I put a hard stop. This was a stop at 229.60. So I did get stopped out in this. Again, you, I use hard stops as a limit order stop for my day trades. Options, I don't put a stop because the stop is my risk. Lower your risk if you're worried about something losing. I say don't risk 1,000, then risk 500. Let the trade play out. Anyways, this pushed up, got in again, got the drop, boom. Got the sell off then in the afternoon for this. And that was the second trade here. Oops. That was the second trade here I did in this, which was a bigger move, which was the move I wanted to begin with. So short of this up here at 231.90, stop was 234.10. Again, 1,500 shares, risk was 3,300. This, this is the move that I wanted in the morning um, that did it, and it was a big trade. But again, I did get stopped in the morning, and then I had to retake it and got the drop. So again, this is something I also teach in the class, when to see a setup for a retake. We had the retake in BA, it was a little wiggly and jiggly. Again, that was the initial day that it gapped down on the Monday after the news came out. We did it again then on the 9th. Again, here's the trade, 225.50. Again, I'm calling this in the room. I'm, I'm calling this. I'm saying 50 by 60. Do it if you want it. You don't have to risk as many shares as me. You could risk more. You could risk less. Again, then we got out. Again, I was looking for 224. Broke it out. Done. Boom. I will show you, though, this kept going. So again, I don't always get the best, 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 best exit. I think that's very difficult to do. Sometimes we get a low of the day exit in a short, but it's difficult to do that. Your goal is to make money. We did it. We got in, got out. Again, this is the one minute on the ninth on BA, and then we didn't do anything in the 10th. So again, I look at every gap. I rate it. If I see a good gap that rates 20 points or more, we're going to take it in the direction of the gap. First, I look for shorts. If I don't find any good shorts, then I look for longs. There wasn't anything good to do on the 10th. Earnings season didn't start until Friday, which was JPM, which was earnings. And we're just getting into the beginning of earnings season. We're just getting into it right now. It's going to be a busy two months to trade. Um, how many times of the day do you have to enter to win a prize during the day? Oh, that's a question for Well365. Again, someone's asking about calling trades. I, I, I'm talking here. I'm doing a webinar. If we have time, I at the end here, if I have time, I can pull up my charts and we can look at what's out there. But I just got done telling you I'm not trading here today. I trade the open. Like, I would be trading right now. So, I mean, I usually trade with my day trades where I'm in and out in 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 minutes. If you want to watch BA, you can certainly watch it, but you're not going to know the setup to do it. But I wouldn't be surprised if BA continues. I am in, I'm still in some trades in BA, though, I will tell you. And I'm obviously not exiting them here in the open. But I'm watching for certain levels in that. That could push back today or it could continue lower with the market. This market's going to be choppy. This market's going to be volatile. So you've got to watch in live time. So I can't do two things at once right now. I'm talking to you. If you want to see me trade live, if you're actually interested in my class, then email me and I will send you a trial for Thursday and Friday. Um, and then you can see me trade in live time. Nobody knows the perfect exit. That's right. I mean, I, you know, I'm very intuitive when I train. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm very good at what I do. But you'd almost have to be, you know, like a, a psychic, really, to always, always, always see what is the maximum, maximum profit or anything you could get. Like, again, even NVIDIA. You know, I thought NVIDIA was higher last week, but who would have thought that it would have did what it did yesterday? Like, so say you went long NVIDIA and you got out of it last week. It was a good trade. It was a good trade. You made money. Again, people were talking about longs. You would have missed the move yesterday unless you did it again. And would you have wanted to do it again? You know, so it's, you're, you just got to make money. If you're consistent and you have more winners than losers, you don't need to worry about piggy targets. That's one of the downsides about, again, which traders mentality is they're looking for piggies every day. Why? Because they, they're losing. They're losing. They're losing money consistently. So they want one big trade like the like some of the Reddit trades that happened like two, two and a half years ago. 
They want one big huge trade that's going to get them all the way back to break even. And that's not really reality, okay? If you learn what to do and you can move forward and you're green, 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 even if it's a chunk it out kind of green, it's going to be a heck of a lot better than looking for a piggy and losing, 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 always holding something too long, waiting for the piggy target. I don't do anything... Um, I'm looking for the gap. I rate the gap, Christopher, he's asking about the options, and then I determine if I'm gonna buy a put, if it's a bearish gap down, and I'm gonna play the momentum to the downside, or again, if I'm gonna buy a call, and I'm gonna go long to the upside. So I'm just looking to do it usually as close to the strike as I can, um, unless I see it's gonna go to a bigger number like I did with BA, where I will call it farther away from the strike, which is why some of those ones were so cheap in the price points. Um, there you go. NVIDIA is, is NVIDIA at 600? I don't know. I didn't look at that this morning. Um, someone's saying the risk is twice the, twice the profit. I don't know what you're talking about with that. If you're talking about Tesla here, this day trade, again, a day trade is a trade where I'm in and out in several minutes. So this is not like an option. Day trades are not about return on investment. Day trades are, are about risk to reward, Okay. So if you're risking 3,300, this is actually a good profit to make in several minutes of the trade. So Tesla, again, was on the 11th. We got in, we shorted it, rallied, got the drop, got out. Again, this is a good trade. You're not holding this overnight. This is a quick trade, okay? And again, where could you even make 50% in 10 minutes? Nowhere. Not even at a, not even at a bank and with interest rates where they are right now. Anyways, getting back to this, we also did BA. I normally do one thing today, but I did like BA and I did like Tesla. Again, this was Thursday last week. This has been rocking and rolling. Some people did BA yesterday. We watched BA and Tesla yesterday. In fact, I didn't look at where Tesla was this morning. Somebody came running in the room. We shorted this, 225.90, boom. Again, put the stop over the number. I'm calling the trade live in the room. I'll say 90 by 50. You gotta know we're looking at. You gotta know we're doing BA. You sized yourself. This, is a, this was a nice trade. Again, we're in quick, get the drop, boom. You could have held this, continued down, went all the way down, broke 223, another nice trade. And then we did JPM, which was a long. We got in and out of this quick. Again, we got in it, had the rally, got the spike, got out. It was a big move and it happened fast and it happened quick and this was a gap up. So yes, I will go long. I like this on Friday. It was the best gap. We did it, got in, got out. Then it dropped with the market. Again, this was Friday. There was econ out Friday, so then the market failed. Really tough to get something to move to the upside without the market. Again, market was down today. I don't know exactly where we open and where we're going to go, but we'll see. This is why people, people are going to get burned this year. Do and buy the dippers. They're just going to get burned. And not burned all year, but they're going to get burned in general if people continue to do that. And I caution people for that. I don't know whether or not people listen to me. And again, this is, I'm looking for a dollar. We got a dollar plus, boom, done, out. Again, got in and out, and that was last week. So I say chunk it out when you're doing day trades. Get in, get out. Whatever you want to make, whatever you want to risk, your trade should be sized equally or close to equal in every single trade that you do. Sometimes you'll risk 3,000, make 1,500. Sometimes you'll risk 3,000, make 3,000. Sometimes you'll risk 3,000, make 5,000. You cannot, this is not an exact science with your exit. You're saying, okay, I'm, I'm looking for 175, 175, it goes over it, out, done, boom. The idea is the fast trains. The idea is capturing the momentum. So again, with an average risk of 3,000 per trade, you could have risked more, 21,307 last week. Um, whoever's, email, whoever's emailing me questions, all those questions, you can email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com. Um, I don't know what you mean by a lot of money. Uh, someone's asking about a lot of money. If you don't want to do margin trades, if this is what you're talking about, if you don't want to do margin trades, whoever said that, Munera, then you would do a put. But if you think this is a lot of money at risk, $3,500, then you have to lower it. And do you understand that, Munera? Because the risk in this trade is three thousand five or was $3,500. Don't confuse the amount of the cost of the position on margin that you need to take this trade with risk. If this trade had lost, which it didn't, okay? Again, if I had been a pig, I would have lost in this. This would have stopped. 
don't confuse the cost of a position with risk. That's right. This is, okay, so this is why this is a good question. Does everybody understand there's a stop in this trade? The risk is 3,500 on this trade, or was. That's all this trade would have lost it, but it stopped out here. That's not the cost to do the position. It's funny because somebody else emailed me that oh, a couple of days ago, over the weekend, over the weekend. That's, that's not, 90 by 50, I was using an example if I call the trade, if I call the trade, okay? Someone said about day trading the gap. Yeah, that's what I was talking about, Mark. Um, again, we can look at the market later if we have time. Someone's asking about today, but I think you're better off emailing me about doing a trial Thursday and Friday because, again, I'm here. Uh, if you have an account, you have to open up an account at a broker where you can trade margin. That's number one. You have two options, okay? A retail broker like Schwab, you got to have 25,000 minimum and you really got to have more than that cuz if it goes to 249999 they're going to shut you off okay so you like put say you put 30,000 in a margin account with Schwab your buying power and I'll just write this in here 30k times 4 equals what so your bp okay is 120 if you, and I'm just making this up here, just on, it just could be any example. If you take a trade that sucks up all your BP, say you take a trade for, say you take a thousand shares of a stock at 120 per share, I'm just making up an example here, and it sucks up all your BP, which you could do, you could use it if you're not in anything else. That doesn't mean if that trade loses, you're going to lose 120,000. If you took the trade and put the stop in, like any one of these here where I'm calling it and you put the stop in, okay, for example, this was 70, uh, 70 cents, okay, and if you took 1,000 shares, you would only have lost, what, $700, not 120 That it concerns me when people ask those questions who are actively trading. People are actively trading here, and it concerns me. It's concerning as a person, as a teacher, as a mentor to people, as an educator in this industry that people ask those questions. You need to understand this. This is very important. Don't go do something else other than and not day trade because you think you need $500,000 or a million dollars in cash to trade. You don't. You are not going to lose $120,000 if, in that example, the trade stops. You would lose seven hundred. dollars Tell me that you get that. If you really are confused about margin, you need to investigate it. Or call me and ask me questions on the phone at 929-3200-GAP. If you don't have a margin account, you say, Melissa, I don't even have 25K. Go to open up an options account. You can open up an options account with $2,000. And maybe it's easier for you to understand that, again, if you if something costs $1, and you buy 10 contracts of a put of something, whatever, that's, that's all you need is the money in the account. It has nothing to do with the cost of the stock. However, stocks that are expensive cost more, aka -E, NVIDIA. Okay, NVIDIA, you know, I didn't look at what it cost yesterday, but it would have cost way more than the BA, the BA puts. Someone's saying margin is a two-edged sword. No, it's not. You just don't know how to use it. You just don't know how to use it. That's, that's, this is the whole, this is what I'm saying. It's concerning that people don't understand that. And you need to understand that. What you're thinking is like a swing trader. And that's what I was talking about earlier. Because people are going to start swing trading. Woo! They're going to start swing trading everything. They're going to buy BA. And then the stock's going to gap down again. Then they're going to lose their shirts or their whole accounts. And that's what happens. Then the, then the broker is going to be calling you on the phone. If you buy something overnight in a swing trade, it's essentially on two to one margin. Or maybe you have the account set up on cash. But if the trade goes against you overnight in a gap, guess what? Guess what? You are toasty points. You will lose your whole account, if it's upside down completely against you, or even more. What do you think happened here? And we're really getting off topic here. I don't, I, I'm not even halfway through, but this is a good discussion. What do you think happened here? Look. Look at this. Boop. Again, we were in this here. We bought the 245 puts. This was not a swing trade. 
But the stock closed the night before. This was January 5th. Actually, the trade I was in was down, but I had a week left. But anyways, this was rallied. I don't know where this closed. It was not at 250. It was close. The next day it was under 230. It was a 228 and change. So again, this crushed people. I'm talking about BA. Um, NVIDIA 350. NVIDIA hasn't been in 350 for like 100 years. I don't understand that question. <laughs> Anyways, how did I know BA or Tesla would fall? I rated the gap. I used a 26-point checklist. This is what you learn in my class. You'll learn how to take the entries yourself. But again, if you want to join my live room, you have to take my class. I don't have a separate room membership. I'm saying if you're interested in my class, then you can email me for a trial. The trial is not for the purpose of making money before paying for the class, even though I know that people do that. That is not the purpose. You should be able to afford the class without the trial. But I know people come in and they do the trial to try to make money before the class, and you might if you take the trades. But anyways, the point is that you're going to learn the 26-point checklist. It tells you what to trade and what to look for each and every single gap, every single day. Margin trading is for day trades. Yes. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about, a gap of 350 on NVIDIA. I, I don't know what, I don't understand that question. I don't know what gap you're talking about. I don't even, you're saying that you think NVIDIA is going to lose half its value? I don't, I don't understand that. Anyways, getting back to here, what I was saying, the key to getting big trades is momentum. So I'm looking for momentum. We've been talking about that. We want big moves. And again, what creates the momentum and gaps institutional money? That's what moves stocks. What is happening to NVIDIA? NVIDIA is getting bought. And it's very important to understand which gaps to do because you can't short every down gap. You can't short every up gap. Can't go long every up gap. Can't go long every down gap. Again, so for those of you that have been talking about gaps, they can be extremely uh, profitable to trade, but you have to evaluate each one, each one in particular because you can't just do any gap willy-nilly, all right? They're not all good. In fact, there is more gaps that are not good than are good. And on any particular day, most stocks will actually go with the market. So, you know, you can't just do everything that's gapping. You wanna focus on the things that are being bought with institutional money or being sold off with institutional money. But for me, I do like to focus to the downside. But we're looking for a big flow of money going in a certain direction. And again, I focus on the shorts. I feel like focusing on the shorts gives me a niche. Many people that day trade don't know how to short. And again, even doing the puts, even doing the puts give me a niche. Who is buying puts in a market that's in an uptrend? Very few people. That We are doing that. We are doing that. It's working. Okay. You have to find the right things to do. But anyways, institutional money is in charge of the market and stocks at all times. Now, can you do this if you're a beginner? Yes. You have to learn the ins and outs. You have to take the class. You have to learn how to do it. Now, I was talking about Tesla. We're just going to quickly go over these Tesla trades. I called on Thursday the 230 puts in Tesla. You see there, these were a little bit more expensive than the Boeings. Still very profitable. I don't know where this is at this morning, but again, I got out of this trade. This had a nice move Thursday, Friday. Monday, the market was closed into the drop. Then on Tuesday, here was the, the chart in Tesla. If you want to take the class, you email me for sign-up forms. The class is January 27th and 28th. The class is $69.99, $6,999. I am running a special right now, which I will go over at the end. Do you teach you how to find the gaps yourself? Yes. Yes, I do. Anyways, here was the, here, let me, I wanted to show you the Thursday, 2.30. So here was this. Stock close here, gap down. Again, did it as close to the strike as I could. Got the drop, boom. Again, this is a daily chart. And the, oops, we did the 220s. So I called the 220s on Friday. This I called a little bit late. Usually I call them in the pre-market. Now these were pretty reasonable. Again, this was far away from the number at the time that I called it. It got there, it broke. 330, again, buy one. If you don't have a margin account, you can open up an account with $2,000, $3,000. Buy one, pay $330. You let the trade play out. Then you buy it. Then you sell it. 
when you exit the tree, okay? Anyways, you'll learn that in the class, but you've got to have an edge to be successful. Mine is number one, finding the best pick that's going to have a big move, and then obviously shorting, obviously shorting. So, you know, I think the market this year is going to have selective things to do. We're not going to short the market every week this year. I'm not in any market trades right now, but for people who think the market is going to keep going up and up and up and up and up and making new highs, that may not occur. And then you're going to see a lot of volatility. But overall, what am I shorting? It's fear. It's panic. It makes sense when you think about it. And that's how you get the moves fast. Are, are my stops based on price action or a money stop? Both. Um, I have no idea about Tesla with Trump. Uh, my intuition. How do I think my intuition gives me an edge? Because I can call the trades very fast in live time. And if you come to the room this week, you'll see that. And if you go to my YouTube, you can watch the videos. You can watch the last couple of videos I have posted. You can see that. Intuition is knowing something so much that I just know it, that I do it. Remember, I started trading in 2008, and it took me three years to figure out the system. So not only have I been doing nothing but gaps and mostly shorting since 2008, I developed the system. I teach the class once a month. So I'm teaching the class once a month. I'm running and trading the room live every single day. It's I could do this in my sleep, Okay. So intuition is just knowing something so well that you trust yourself to take the trade and do it without having to go through the whole thinking process. I do the thinking process in the pre-market when I get up in the morning and I rate the gap. But once the market opens right away at 930 and I'm doing it live and we have seconds and minutes and I'm looking to call the trades and take the trades and figure out my sizing, that's where my intuition comes in. That's the strong suit of following me and actually the benefit of being in my live room and then getting my live trade calls. Because by the time you would process it, it, you may miss the trade. As you saw, some of those trades went really, really fast. Again, we've been talking about institutional money and why I like to short, but you really, you need to have the power and again, it happens in gaps. So I use a 26-point checklist. This is what I teach in the class, plus the entries, plus the exits. We're looking for 20 points or more, 20 points or more. But again, it's about the focus. Everyone that trades should have a focus. If, if you're trading today, if you're going to trade after I'm done here, after I'm done talking, what are you going to do? And why are you doing it? And if you're not thinking those things through, then you're taking trades like 50-50 crap shoot, which is basically gambling. You've got to have a focus in order to be efficient and effective. And again, look at the long term. Why are you doing this? What are your goals? We we're talking about this at the beginning with the American dream. If you really want to do well with this, get a plan of action. Get a plan of action and say, okay, say, okay by the end of 2024, I'm going to have made this much money trading. How am I going to make it happen? And again, that's not that long. That's not that long. Before you know it, it's going to be 2025. I mean, time is flying by, absolutely flying by. I mean, it's crazy, but it's true. It's hard to believe that it's earnings season already and that we're halfway through the month of January. But every day I'm looking for stocks to trade that have, number one, a high probability of directional bias for the entire day, if we can get it. Big moves on the day, which you saw in the BA and the Tesla. Early confirmation of the bias between 9.30 and 10. I'm sometimes out in 5, 10, 15 minutes. And precise entries with follow through and a good risk to reward, which is really what I want. But I'm looking at the time frame and the daily to make the point decision about the gap. Then I take the trade on the one minute. So again, I'm using the one minute for your accuracy, which is you're going to learn how to take all the entries I do in the class. But I'm using the daily for the points. Okay. So I'm looking at a big time frame, and this is again the genius of the system. I'm analyzing on a bigger time frame. What is going to happen to BA? I said BA is going to fall. Okay, let's hone it down in the one minute to get as best of an entry as it can. So while I may not always get the best exit, I am trying to get the best entry, and I and and the and you know an early entry is what I what I want to say, like quick, as quick as I can get it. Anyways, what will you learn in the class? The 26-point Golden Gap rating system. That's what it's going to help you pick which stock to trade each day. And yes, someone asked. You can learn it yourself. You can do it yourself. Why? I'm not going to be teaching this forever. Okay? So the reality is you do have to learn it yourself. The benefit of being in the room is while you're learning it, you can do it and you can make money and you can follow me. Um, no, I don't use that, Jeff. It pinpoints ahead of time which stock will have the move in the day with volatility to trade. 
And having a checklist keeps you organized and focused. Having a checklist forces you to look at what you should be looking at in a chart and a stop to make the correct decision and not focusing on other things or being distracted by other things, I should say, or even like even looking at your P&L, okay? A checklist is a plan of action. Everyone that puts money in the market should have a plan of action and a checklist. On a professional level, all high-income career field specialists have checklists, okay? So again, we're looking to follow the gap, looking to follow the institution of money, looking to do it fast. I'm going to skip ahead here. If you decide you want to follow up with me, email me at melissathestockswoosh.com. The class is January 27th and 28th, so you have time. It's not this weekend. It's the following weekend. And But if you sign up, like if you sign up today, you can get in and start getting the options trades and the day trades tomorrow. So I have a trial for the day trade room. There's no trials for the options newsletter. That letter is like gold. And again, people that joined even at the beginning of this year have already more than paid for the class. It was just, we just the setups were there. How do I know when we're going to get the next big BA? I have no idea, but I know you have to be a member with me to get the trade. Because the trades happen, you got to be there to take the trade. I have no idea when we get the next one. I do know, though, that it's earnings season. So there will be trades and big moves and things to do, and there will be busy trades every single day. You can do a trade with a small account. You have to size your risk accordingly. Um, I don't know what you, if you're talking about by capital. Again, you can do options. If you're talking about uh, day trades, there's my email. You can open up a prop account. You can go to some prop places that will give you 10 to 1 margin with $5,000 or less. Some places will do it with $2,500 or less. That you have to investigate and look into. Anyways, remember, you sign up for my class and deciding to trade and learning is an investment in yourself, but you need to get the value out of it. I talk to people. I know the price points of different classes out there. You could pay for 100 classes that cost more than my class and get no value out of them. You have to look at the value. You want, to, you want to pay for something and you want to get something out of it. So it doesn't matter if something costs less than my class. If you don't get anything out of it, it was a waste of money. And if you take trades and follow somebody that doesn't know what they're doing and you lose money on their trades, you really wasted your money. You wasted money on the class and you wasted money on bad trades. So you've got to look at it that you're getting something out of it. And that's how you're going to feel good about what you're doing. So empower yourself today. It's a complete system, which you will learn in the class to trade. The class is called the Golden Gap Course. It's a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. The class is $69.99. Again, the 27th and 28th, I am doing a special first class of 2024. If you sign up by this Sunday, the 21st, you'll get the training room free to the end of this year. The options newsletter subscription, which is like gold, till the end of this year. The market report subscription to the end of the year. And again, this ends... Um, I don't know why I put the 31st. It ends the 21st, sorry. The 31st, you'd miss the class. Because <laughs> the class is the 27th, the 28th. That's a typo. Anyways, email me if you want to sign up, if you want to try out. And don't forget, you got to love what you do. If you're trading and you're angry and you hate the market and you're mad at it for losing, what the heck are you doing? You got to love what you do. I love making money and I love trading. I love the fast trades. I love shorting. I love being able to predict the B is going to go to 200 weeks before it doesn't. You've got to love what you do because you're going to do it for a long, long time. And if you're working a job and you don't like it and you want to become a full-time trader, find a way to make it happen. There's no other way you can do it by transitioning. You've got to love what you do for a living because you're going to spend a long, long time doing it. Um, All right, Melissa, we you. are at time, so I'm going to have to get you wrapped up now. Thanks. Thanks for having me. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much, Melissa. I appreciate you being with us. Let me go ahead and take the screen uh, from